Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are checking out resin 3D printing and I'm leaving you with my opinion on the Alphawise W10 3D printer. Before going ahead, I want to mention that this video is not sponsored by Alphawise and I have purchased this printer on my own. I do not receive any support by them and if you want to support me, please consider subscribing to my channel and also following my social media helps. They are linked in the description below. And now back to the video. With the latest trend of cheap resin 3D printing machines, I myself was also pretty curious to explore this new technique. So I ordered myself the Alphawise W10 3D printer from Gearbest for around 246 euros, which is approximately 280 US dollars. Building the machine was fairly easy as it already comes pre-assembled. All you have to do is to put together those acrylic sheets with some rubber bands. The machine itself ships with a spatula, one pair of gloves, some allen keys and also some 250ml longer resin. The longer resin really caught my eye. As you might have seen there are also longer 3D, 3D printers which recently also have been featured on, for example, 3D Printing Nerd and I will link his video in the description below. As it seems, the Alphawise W10 is exactly the same as the longer 3D Orange 10. There was a longer 3D imprint on the cardboard box of my printer and most noticeably there's a sticker on the back of the printer which states that this machine is produced by longer 3D. Stats wise, both printers also kind of look the same. The Alphawise W10 features a 89 x 55 x 140 mm build volume with a screen resolution of 854 x 480. And those stats are not the best if you compare this printer, for example, to the Elegoo Mars. The Elegoo Mars is also around 250 euro and features a build volume of 120 times 68 times 155 millimeter and the screen resolution is 2560 times 1440 but now back to the Alphawise W10. The first print I made was a total failure which already leads me to the first and the biggest problem the inaccuracy of X and Y and the bad leveling. In my opinion the leveling solution of this printer with those four screws looks quite easy in the first place but does not work very well. Following the instructions you have to loosen all four screws, move down the printer, place a paper under the build plate, push down the build plate and then tighten the screws diagonally. I tried that multiple times which always leads to an unleveled bed as while you are tightening those screws gently the build plate will twist itself when the metal parts are clamped together by those screws. I tried helping myself with placing two sheets of paper under the left side of the bed and only one sheet of paper under the right side of the bed which left me with a somewhat level bed. Something which also bothers me is that the C-axis lead screw is coupled to the motor with a spin coupler which also leads to more inaccuracy as you can see. The printer can produce some high quality prints. After leveling Put in the SD card, fill the tank with some resin and start your print via the easy to use touch screen. The first prints as said failed due to an unleveled bed. But after improving the bed leveling I printed a dev trooper which was already pre-sliced on the SD card. The result was very promising as you can see. I instantly ordered some Elegoo translucent green resin and printed the stargazer by Trahan. Or Trahan? I don't know. Link in the description below. And the three skulls, which also were pre sliced on the SD card. Important notice from my side when working with translucent resin, you always should use fresh IPA and fresh clean water to clean your prints, otherwise, they will get quite frosty, as you can see on those pictures. In the end, I reprinted the Stargazer and didn't wash it at all and just cured the print in the sunlight. I also painted the frosty Stargazer and the three skulls, and after painting, I was really stoked about the quality without any post-processing at all. The slicer for this machine is called Alphawise W10. There I also found some evidence that the longer slicer and the Alphawise slicer most likely are the same. Anyhow, it works fairly easy 
as you can import your model, scale, rotate and move it around, create your supports and even customize them. The only thing I am missing in the slicer is an estimated print time. This should be a fairly easy implementation as the calculation for the print time is only based on layer number and the curing time per layer. It is already displayed on the machine when starting the print. I also used some anycubic resin and printed the pre-sliced beetle, a Warhammer Space Marine, a 3D Banshee and a Sagrada Familia. As I have learned here, it is important to remove the supports before curing as the parts will be too brittle afterwards and you will most likely snap off some fine details like the legs of the beetle which I have shown you in the picture. However, the Space Marine came out really really well, despite it having multiple supports on it and the cleanup work will be quite challenging. But the details you can get are pretty impressive. Same thing is seen on the Sagrada Familia, where super fine details were printed which are beyond FDM 3D printing. But that model and also the 3D Banshee have significant flaws which you can see very clearly on the 3D Banshee. Both issues which I mentioned before lead to prints being inaccurate in X and Y and also look like the first couple of Z layers are smashed together. Releveling the bed will help to improve this issue. For further investigation and if the resin might be a factor when printing, I printed this lattice at 25 micron, 50 micron, 75 micron and 100 microns with the longer resin. I discovered that the 100 micron print looks slightly better than the other ones while the lower layer height leads to more compressed and inaccurate Z layers. In my idea, this proves that the Z-axis concept of this machine is not perfect at all. So, do I recommend this machine? Yes and no. It is an okay entry-level resin 3D printer with an easy to use slicer and interface. If you have experience for example with budget FDM 3D printers, you might have the knowledge to master this kind of printer. If you want a plug and play machine without any tinkering, this not might be the right printer for you. You might have to look into alternatives like the Aleco Mars for example in the same price range or in a higher price range like the Prusa SL1. Please also notice that resin 3D printing is quite dangerous. I always wear gloves when working with the printer and I also wear a respirator when resin is involved. My printer is working in a well ventilated area. Also, when snipping off supports which have been cured before, wear some safety glasses because these supports tend to fly around everywhere. I hope you liked my first impression of this resin 3D printer and I will keep you updated as I'm exploring new ways to use it and new techniques in future videos. As said, if you want to support me, please mind subscribing to my channel and if you already have experience with SLA or DLP, UV, SED, 3D printers, leave me your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you liked this video and learned something. As always, I want to thank you for watching, have a nice day and goodbye.